uh, welcome you all to the next class on uh, inorganic chemistry of life. Uh, in the previous class we have been uh, looking at uh, the manganese based enzymes. Uh, I said the manganese based enzymes based on one manganese, there are two based on two manganese and three manganese and towards the end of the uh, class we were trying to look at the corresponding reactions, reactions of the superoxide uh, going from the superoxide radical, uh, superoxide dismutation of the radical to the uh, hydrogen peroxide and the catalase uh, dis uh, disproportionating the uh, hydrogen peroxide to water and oxygen and uh, we are also looking at the uh, photosystem where the, uh, the carbon dioxide is converted to the carbohydrate and the water is oxidized to oxygen. And we looked at uh, two other reactions as well one is the ribonucleotide directase where ribonucleotides uh, re deoxyribonucleotides are synthesized from the ribonucleotides uh, by the removal of the OH group from uh, these two prime position and replacing it with the uh, hydrogen. So, uh, that is where and one another example we have looked at was the uh, case of the um, dioxygenase. I talked to you that dioxygenase will be taught to you more detailedly under uh, copper and iron. Okay, so, let us see in this class let us look at what is the kind of a uh, problem that one would expect or what kind of a damage aspects one would expect with the uh, with the uh, O2 minus superoxide radical. So, uh, I am sure you must have everyone must have heard something called oxidative stress. So, oxidative stress is nothing but the formation of oxygen based radicals, oxygen based anionic species which are in turn involved in reacting with the uh, tissue and spoiling the tissue cell or organ and that is what is referred as the oxidative damage. As you can see here O2 minus uh, dot which is a superoxide radical uh, can combine with uh, uh, a nitrosyl group and can affect the lipids, can affect uh, uh, cells, can affect various kinds of things uh, uh, in the biological system and all this leads to the damage of the biological uh, tissue. So, therefore, all this is referred as reactive oxygen species. Most of the times these are referred as ROS and some people will talk uh, call this as ROS. ROS. So, uh, I would prefer not to use the word ROS, but I would use the word ROS, reactive oxygen species. So, this reactive oxygen species is an in important terminology O2 minus dot O2 2 minus uh, OH minus OH minus or OH dot. So, all these kinds of things are called the uh, reactive oxygen species uh, which is written as ROS ROS. Okay. So, I will be referring to ROS at different stages. So, ROS is a reactive oxygen species which cause damage to the tissue cells and tissue therefore, which is referred in the uh, in the form of oxidative stress. Now, let us look at the enzyme which indeed <coughs> uh, does uh, take care of this particular uh, O2 minus radicals and uh, try to uh, disproportionate these ones. So, that particular enzyme is called the superoxide dismutase. It is refer, referred as superoxide dismutase. Since it is a manganese containing, we call it as a manganese superoxide dismutase. Of course, this is uh, very vital in the cells because it will uh, uh, it will protect the uh, <coughs> cells from the reactive oxygen spaces and thereby it will protect the cells from uh, uh, the uh, apoptotic cell death. So, it will protect from that. So, that is in other words against oxidative stress. Okay. So, all these things and this enzyme uh, uh, is encodes the mitochondrial protein and it forms a homo tetramer and binds one manganese per subunit. There are four manganese uh, for, four, for the total protein and this protein binds the superoxide of course, by the uh, product of the oxidative phosphorylation and converts the uh, converts the superoxide into the hydrogen peroxide as we have seen already and the dioxygen O2. Okay. Uh, 
ok. So, that means partly it is making uh, the harmful O2 minus to uh, O2 which is harmless H2O2 which is partially harmful ok. That we will see in a while. Let us look at the kind of reaction that happens in this particular case uh, and you see that the enzyme uh, is shown over there. Uh, so, this is what one of the units of the total tetrameric uh, protein. So, this is called the monomer pot of the protein. So, four such things will join together and form the total protein and the four manganese centers therefore, you have reactivity happening at each st stage. Now, the manganese superoxide is an enzyme and uh, here we are showing one subunit and the manganese is uh, uh, surrounded by these groups which you can see very clearly over there one histidine other histidine and the other histidine uh, oxo or hydroxo species which is suspended or connected through the uh, secondary force interactions coming from the protein this is also the protein. So, this is the kind of a situation. So, what will what, what happens uh, when you add to this enzyme one mole of uh, O2 minus. So, you, the manganese uh, in the uh, in this state as the manganese 3 plus and the manganese 3 plus when the O2 minus is added and the O2 minus uh, is oxidized means the electron should be going to the manganese. So, the manganese 3 plus when the electron comes to the manganese center it becomes manganese 2 plus. So, manganese 3 plus is reduced O2 minus is oxidized all that we would say. So, now this is O2 minus which is oxidized O2 oxidized O2 will not stay it will go escape away. And now, so now you have uh, enzyme in the manganese 2 state and this manganese 2 state enzyme in the uh, is again is reactive towards the one more or captures one more mole of O2 minus and this will react with the uh, manganese center and to get the oxidized and get self reduced. When the O2 minus uh, is reduced what will happen O2 minus dot is reduced it will become uh, O2 2 minus. So, in the first case stage you have O2 minus dot and this will give away electron ok. So, therefore, it will give O2. In the second step O2 minus is added and to, to this uh, you, uh, you are basically uh, taking the uh, electron to this. So, therefore, and that will go to O2 2 minus kind of things. Where. So, you have oxidation uh, part and uh, you have a uh, reduction part. So, this means the manganese 3 here uh, manganese 3 plus will go to manganese 2 plus ok and then manganese 2 plus will go to again manganese 3 plus ok. So, we will go to the manganese 3 plus. So, the manganese 2 plus will go to this. So, this uh, O2 minus is oxidized manganese is reduced uh, uh, O2 minus is reduced manganese is oxidized. All that you have to understand is very nicely very simply it is a redox reaction very simply it is a redox reaction nothing more than that no need to worry at all the very simple to remember understand the whole thing. So, first mole uh, the O2 minus dot gets oxidized to O2, manganese 3 gets reduced to manganese 2 and then the second O2 will reduce that means reduced form of O2 minus is O2 2 minus which is peroxo kind of species and this will uh, in presence of the proton will go as a hydrogen peroxide and go back to the manganese 3. So, the same thing is shown over there nothing more manganese 3 SOD O2 minus dot plus H plus manganese 2 SOD and this converts to water and oxygen is last. Now, manganese 2 form of SOD uh, with the one more mole of the O2 minus will go to the manganese 3 O2. Okay. So, first superoxide ion is oxidized and the second superoxide ion is reduced. In the first step the manganese oxidation state uh, is reduced uh, by 1 and then second state the it is regained. So, I hope you understand the whole thing. Now, so in this particular enzyme what have we created? You created or generated O2 plus H2O2. So, so O2 is harmless H2O2 is there this has to be taken care and this is taken care by an enzyme called uh, catalase enzyme since it is manganese is present manganese catalase enzyme since this is also saves the cells from dying. So, it is also oxidative uh, uh, stress reliever it works 
ROS, uh, reactive oxygen species. And, and if you look at the catalysis of this one, there's a huge amount of turnover is done by these enzymes and uh, uh, so as you can see that it converts. And finally, it converts to the uh, one, uh, the water and the uh, O2. So, they both are harmless. Okay, so, let us look at the uh, reactive center present in the manganese catalyst. Manganese catalyst has a slightly different kind of a center than what the manganese superoxide dismutase has got. Manganese superoxide dismutase has got is a mono manganese center, manganese catalyst has got dimanganese center. Now, look at the dimanganese center, the protein is shown over here, this is one of the subunits of this. And if you just focus a bit on this side, you can see one manganese ion here, another manganese ion here. This is labeled as manganese 1, labeled as manganese 2 and surrounded by some groups which are directly bonded, some groups which are directly bonded and that is what you can see here. If you can see here, uh, one of the histidine is bonded, another the glutamic is bonded. One of the histidine is bonded, one of the glutamic is bonded. Also is connecting these two uh, manganese is a bridged glutamic. So, it is a dinuclear, a perfect bridge dinuclear uh, complex. Okay. As you can see that at one stage it has a bridging of this OH as well during the reactivity of this. Okay. So, this you understand the active side, the metal side. We are studying the biological inorganic chemistry or inorganic chemistry of life. So, we are interested at the metal center and therefore, we are looking at the things happening at the metal center. Now, let me draw your attention to the following uh, aspect of it. Okay, so, what is this enzyme? The manganese catalyst and uh, you have the two manganese uh, centers here and the manganese 2 and manganese 2 and you have uh, the bridging etcetera etcetera and this will take up the hydrogen peroxide and there is a water present, water will be displaced nothing to worry. So, hydrogen peroxide uh, is forming into this and removal of this oxygen, uh, uh, water will lead to the, uh, the manganese uh, center to be oxidized. You see that the manganese center is oxidized. Manganese center is 2 plus 2 plus 2 will go to the manganese center in the uh, plus 3 plus 3. This B is the one which is the base which is nothing but a carboxylic group in the protein uh, side chain of the one of the uh, the protein might is when it takes up the proton because the BH plus okay, and that is what is said. So, that is called general base reaction and that proton is given away and that will go into the water. So, therefore, you have the uh, and this uh, stage uh, where the manganese 3, manganese 3, dimanganese 3 like in the previous case it was manganese 3 to manganese 2, here it is manganese 2 to manganese 3, it is a reverse kind of a reaction. This manganese 3 now mangan dimanganese 3 will take up another H2O2 molecule and this H2O2 molecule is again uh, interacting with this and that leads to uh, the uh, removal of the uh, O2 moiety out of this and then leaves the water molecule in this. And you see that there is a, a simple carboxylate bridge here, but when it comes to the dimanganese 3, it demands O bridge that is called O2 minus bridge. So, it is the manganese to manganese is uh, manganese 2 to manganese 2, uh, you have only carboxylate bridge. Okay. But when it goes to the manganese 3 to manganese 3, so you have one that is okay, and this is what is what we remove uh, is O2 minus. So, this is oxo species. This oxo species comes when we have a manganese 3 kind of thing, and that is what you see in the structure over here this is a bridging and this bridging will again fall down and this goes as a water as you can see uh, 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 in this and it will form as a o, O2 is. So, in the first case in the first step the water is coming out and the second step O2 is coming out. So, therefore, H2O2 is converted into the water and the O2 you can see the reaction here. H2O2 plus 2 electrons plus 2 protons giving to H2O, H2O2 giving 2H plus plus O2 plus 2. The total reaction is 2H2O2 going to water and oxygen and this is what the thing is, what is happening. Understand that? 
So, this process is a reduction process and this process is an oxidation process. So, in the previous case the first step is oxidation, second step is reduction. With respect to the metal point of view, first step is the reduction, second step is oxidation. Here it is the other way around. So, it goes from the 2 to 3 and 3 to 2 and they are 3 to 2 and 2 to 3. So, that is the kind of difference. So, these are some extra uh, uh, you know reactions uh, in presence of the ammonia uh, or ammonium hydroxide. Uh, you can try to trap this particular species and you can take out and add the H2O2 and you can get the bridging one too. So, this part of the cycle is not very important. If you understand this four things is mostly good enough. Okay. Going uh, dimanganese 2 to dimanganese uh, uh, the peroxo bridging to the dimanganese 3 and then losing out the uh, water and the next uh, hydrogen peroxide binding will take back to the manganese 2 and the O2 kind of thing. So, now you understand together when you add the first part uh, is the um, superoxide is dismuted to the to the uh, uh, O2 and H2O2 by the catalase the H2O2 is dismutated to the water and uh, uh, O2. So, therefore, enzymes of manganese uh, SOD plus manganese uh, uh, catalase. So, will protect uh, protect from oxidative stress. It's together. So, this is this is an important aspect that one need to uh, understand uh, in this. Okay, let us go to the next enzyme, the last one. Uh, in the manganese uh, series is the bacterial photosynthetic apparatus. It is a very huge one and I will show you on the next slide the reactions etcetera. All that we are interested in this is the where as an inorganic chemist. So, we are interested in the species where this particular region where the oxygen is being evolved okay? and that is where is shown over there the water going to O2 and this is where you have the uh, manganese cluster and this is what comes under the photosystem too. The rest of the things are not important for biological point of view where what kind of proteins are there and this is a membrane etcetera. So, green, green plant photosynthesis. Let us look at the kind of reactions that happen and you know very well in the photosystem there are two parts of the reaction. One is the light driven reaction other is the dark reaction. So, that means there is a light and there is a lapse and dark, there is a light, there is a lapse which is a dark. So, light and dark uh, stimuli. In the light what is happens is that the light is necessary to uh, oxidize the water to the O2. Uh, of course, you are using NADP uh, and of course, in the process that uh, ATP synthesis takes place. So, the NADP gets reduced and water uh, gets oxidized to O2. And the second part is the dark part which we are not going to be concerned in this particular biological inorganic chemistry, but just see the reaction. The CO2 is uh, converted to uh, the uh, C6H12O6 which is carbohydrate. The, therefore, you have a reduction occurring uh, in this and uh, so this whole thing is by the reduced so uh, NADPH so protons uh, the two electron reduced. Okay. Uh, uh, so, therefore, you have the 12 ATPs is converted. So, you have a lot of ATP consumed in the second reaction, ATP is synthesized in the first reaction, but however, we are concerned with the first reaction. The same thing is shown over here, there is a light driven reaction and the dark driven reaction. So, the light reaction, the light plus water is converted into oxygen uh, and then carbon dioxide uh, is converted into the glucose. Okay. So, let us look at uh, how this particular thing is seen in this enzyme. Enzyme has got two parts, one is photosystem 2 and other is photosystem 1. We are not at all in involved in explaining the photosystem 1, but we are involved in explaining the photosystem 2. And that too in the photosystem 2 at this stage you have the manganese cluster. We will be looking at this as an important event. You see there are different reactions happening. I will explain you first look at this particular thing in form of energy given in the form of electron uh, volts. You can see it is also can be converted into the 
uh, into the uh, uh, potential. So, if you look at this particular uh, center is the one which is involved in the uh, oxidation of the water. So, when you oxidize the water obviously you are releasing the electrons and these electrons are carried over here and this is the uh, antennae where it can collect the photons and that will uh, uh, take the excited state. And at this excited state the, uh, the, uh, the positive charge and the negatively charged electron will separate and this separated electron will pass through all of these. And this is called a funnel and these are different proteins which is not a part of this uh, story now, they are different iron uh, electron transport proteins. I will be explaining electron transport proteins when I come to the iron story and when I come to the copper story also. And this will go here and this part will go into the photosystem one. So, let us focus at this particular thing how what happens in this. So, before going to that just not to frighten you this is the kind of a uh, photosystem uh, cyanobacterial photosystem too huge protein. We are interested in this particular region where circle where the tetranuclear manganese cluster is involved. So, that is where the water oxidation happens and that is what we are going to look at the thing. Now, so I talked to you that when the light impinged on the uh, source and the, the oxidation uh, uh, of the water occurring the releasing the electrons, the electrons will go through this kind of a uh, funnel. So, you can see these arrows are showing the direction of these uh, ones and all these groups collect the uh, light and their light harvesting. So, you have a coupled light harvesting plus the uh, electron transporting and beyond this it will go to the, uh, to the photosystem one, we are not interested in that. Okay? So, that is how the electron transfer. Now, let us see very close to the manganese center. As I told you earlier, it is a manganese tetranuclear cluster. It is a tetranuclear manganese cluster along with calcium. Now, there are 5 ions. You can see here the purple ones is manganese 1, manganese 2, manganese 3 and the manganese 4 and calcium. So, manganese 1, 2, 3 and calcium form a kind of a distorted cubane structure where the manganese 4 is protruding outside. So, you can sit leisurely and go through the what are the connections with the protein is already shown here. What are the secondary interactions are all shown here. So, these dot 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 lines are shown through the secondary interactions. So, all these species the, the manganese is stabilized by the coordinations as well as the oxo species are stabilized by the, the all the red ones are the oxo species by a lot of secondary interactions which are shown by the uh, dot 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 kind of thing. So, you by looking at this you will get. So, the important uh, aspect in this is the role of this manganese cluster, uh, uh, cluster. In fact, the manganese 1, 2, 3 is not directly involved in oxidizing the water to O2, but it is the manganese 4 and the calcium, these are involved. But all other manganese are in, uh, important because there is a lot of electron redox processes happening. So, and there the manganese 1, 2, 3 will play a role. So, you can also see how this particular uh, light harvesting uh, system and this is where actually the manganese 4 cluster and then uh, water converting into this. So, we are not interested in the rest of the part as you can see here the cluster the uh, cubane and the manganese outside converting. So, therefore, it is this manganese and the calcium which are important in this. Now, look at the kind of a steps that we have uh, as I told you it is a light and dark and light and dark and light and dark. So, the original state of the enzyme is called S0 and after one uh, imp, uh, pulse of light it is called S1, next, next pulse of light is called S2, next pulse of light S3, next pulse of light S4 and then go back to this. So, as a result of this what are you seeing here? Manganese oxidation states are changing. So, what is in each case? One electron is coming out, one proton, one electron, one electron, one proton one electron, one proton. You count all of these, four electrons and four protons you can see. And of course, there is a water entry into this and that is. So, the total reaction is two waters converting into O2 plus 4 H plus four four electron. And that is what is done by these ones. But actual water binding and conversion into O2 is done between the calcium and one of the fourth manganese not with the other things. But all other manganese are also absolutely important. So, 
3 of the manganese 3 plus 1 manganese 4 plus what it means is and then one oxidation taken place therefore, 2 3 2 or in 3 plus 2 or in 4 plus and then one more uh, electron. So, 1 3 plus 3 of the 4 plus and at this stage either all 4 plus not very clear 1 3 plus 3 of them or 4 plus, but there could be a radical also of the under ligand side we do not know exactly. So, the well understood uh, regions are S 0, S 1 and S 2 in fact, the other states are not. In fact, in the literature if you go and see a lot of small molecular complexes are already being synthesized and studied very well for S 0 system, S 1 system, S 2 with the tetranuclear manganese complexes not known, but in this course I am not taking up all those details of this. So, we understand that totally all these 8 electron uh, 4 electrons and 4 protons happening through these oxidation states. So, as I told you one of the important aspect in this is that uh, the all the 4 uh, the manganese ions are not directly involved with the O2 o, o water, but all the uh, manganese ions are important in the electron transfer as you have seen in the previous uh, the cycle that is shown there. So, but the only one of the manganese uh, and the calcium center are involved in water activation and this is further supported by one of the anion support. This anion will be favoring this hydrogen bonding system and favors. So, the water binds uh, from the manganese and from the calcium center and the, the conversion of this water into the manganese oxo species and that is where the oxidative state occurs. And this oxidized manganese 4 is reactive therefore, it reacts with one of the neighboring waters and form a OO bond which you can call this as a peroxo bond kind of a equal to peroxo bond. And this peroxo bond is further activated by breaking up and to give the O2. So, there are other kinds of mechanisms in the literature we are not taking up this does not mean other mechanisms do not occur. Why other mechanisms are not there? Because we do not know as I told you in the previous slide the S 3 state is not well understood and S 4 state of course, is not understood because this goes very very fast. S 0 is very well known, S 1 is very well known, S 2 is very well known. Therefore, there could be more than one different kind of a mechanism that is the reason why we are saying all this. So, though there are 4 manganese it is only one manganese ion which is directly involved in binding to oxygen in converting the uh, sorry binding to water and converting into o peroxide and then uh, uh, to what uh, O2. Okay. All other manganese are important for L in the electron transfer funnel in this thing. So, so overall what we have seen overall what we have seen in the manganese story manganese has large number of oxidation states, but we uh, see that the important things are 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus very rarely may be 5 plus not so much uh, so uh, 5 plus and beyond are not too oxidative in nature and uh, below 2 plus are too reducive in nature therefore, these are not. There are variety of uh, oxidative redoxative kind of enzymes are there, but uh, I, I have tried to give you only a few of those examples and uh, the ribonucleotide reductase the superoxide dismutase, the catalase, the photosystem and dioxygenase of which 3 cases I have explained the mechanism that is superoxide dismutase which converts the uh, superoxide into the uh, into the hydrogen peroxide plus O2 and this is further taken up by this hydrogen peroxide is further taken up by catalase and catalase is a dinuclear uh, manganese system and this will convert the H2O2 into uh, O2 and uh, plus H2O. So, overall SOD and catalase together will save the cells, will save the tissue, will save the body from the uh, oxidative stress or reactive oxygen species ROS. So, therefore, it is important I have explained that the mechanism in one case is going from 3 to 2, 3 oxidation 3 plus to 2 plus in the other uh, and uh, reversal in the other case 2 plus to 3 plus and the reversal the one is mononuclear other is dinuclear. Then the other enzyme that I have explained to you is the uh, not an enzyme a part of the enzyme in the photosystem 2 where the tetranuclear ion cl uh, manganese cluster is involved. Though the tetranuclear manganese cluster is involved it is associated with another calcium and calcium plus 3 manganese will form a distorted cubane structure 
and the fourth auxin which is standing outside or sitting outside is one which is important uh, in direct binding to water converting to uh, manganese oxo species converting the this into the O2 uh, peroxo species then further converting into O2. So, so, but all the other three of manganese are also important as you can see the manganese are going through the 3 plus to 4 plus uh, and uh, uh, etcetera that we have seen through S0 to S1 to S2 to S3 to S4 uh, back to S0 and I told you S1, S0, S1, S2 are very well understood S3 and S4 is not much understood S1, S0, S1, S2 cases there are large number of uh, model complexes are built and I think we will probably uh, uh, stop the story of manganese at this stage after explaining these three enzyme uh, mechanisms. Uh, then we will go into the next class in the iron enzymes. Thank you very much.